Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Diane Desiel and today I'm showing you how to fuse together the bodice with the pant so we could make a jumpsuit. First I want to say that I'm using my basic block without the seam allowance. That's why I have the darts on my block and I'm doing it with the basic block because I think there's more complication than doing the same jumpsuit with knit block because of the dart. But the measurement, they should be pretty much the same if you're doing it in woven like this one or in knit. Now I want to do a long jumpsuit, but since the bottom of the leg doesn't change, I'm just going to do the top part of the jumpsuit. So in this example, I will also show you the little modification we have to do when we want to do a short. Now I'm going to trace the front bottom part and I'm going to indicate my grain line. Now to do my short, I'm going to put the measurement from the crotch or hip level. I'm going to do it 90 degree from the grain line. And for this example, five centimeter or two inches down the crotch level, and I will trace. Now to be able to place my front block with the same grain line as my pant, I'm going to report my pant grain line parallel until it does touch the notch. I'm doing that just because I know mine is parallel to the grain line, but maybe you're using a different block and it might be a little bit going inside and this one should be straight. So parallel until touching the notch of the crotch and I'm going to trace towards the top. Now it's time to place the bodice block over. The measurement I'm giving you is I want you to measure two centimeter or three quarter of an inch up from the waist at the side seam of the pant. This two centimeter could vary a little bit in plus or in minus. So now we're going to place the front sloper, bodice sloper on the line and move it down until we reach the two centimeter just like that and then we trace all around. Now we're going to continue and we'll place the back. Right away you'll see that the back is going to be a lot more in an angle than the front. So make sure you keep enough space to do your jumpsuit. We'll start with the tracing of the pant. Remember to indicate the grain line and the two pivots. Again, for the land, I'm going to ask you to trace 90 degrees from the grain line, five centimeter or two inches for this example, below the hip notch. But this time we're going to trace just the side seam area. Maybe you could go over by three or four centimeter, an inch, an inch and a half. Now for the inseam, if you remember, the back inseam is shorter than the front. But if you're doing a short, you should keep them the same length. So for this one, I'm just going to measure five centimeter or two inches below. And you could even trace a square about a centimeter or three eighths of an inch. Then you could use your French curve and just connect with the first level that we found. Now we're ready to place the bodice over the pant on the back, but this time we'll do it different than the front. And we're also going to have different measurements. We're keeping the two centimeter or three quarter of an inch that we place at the side seam, same as the front. But at the center back, I want you to place an extra centimeter, so three cm, or one inch and one eight. So I just put my measurement with a little line now to place my bodice horizontally, you're going to use your grain line, move your ruler parallel to your grain line until you touch the first notch for the dart. So just like that, parallel to my grain line, I'm going to trace a little bit towards the top. 
So this is going to be my guide to place the first notch of the dart of my bodice. Now that I have my three reference, I could place my block touching the notch level, touching the 3cm and touching the 2cm on the other side. Remember what I told you to keep enough space to do your back block and they don't overlap. Look what happened here, they overlap a little. So I'm going to cut in the middle, keep my front as it is, and add a little piece of cardboard to do my underarm of the back. Now I could trace all around my bodice block. Now I'm going to explain why do we put distance between the bodice and the pant, but even before to explain, I want to tell you that if you want to do a jumpsuit and keep the waist seam, you should still add the same measurement. Very often, if you do have seam at the waist, we even do a piece, the width of a narrow waistband, like a 3cm or an inch, an inch and a quarter, and we place it between the two pieces. Now, if you want to know why do we put that much to the length, just think about how much your back center back waist point goes down when you just sit. You will find out that it goes down at least five centimeter. And if you notice, we did put three and about two in the front. That should be the minimum that you should put. So when you do sit, it is comfortable. It's not pulling. Of course, when it's a jumpsuit, your waist doesn't really go down but the crotch should pivot a little bit towards the back and give you the length that you need to sit. Now, usually when you wear a one piece like that, very often they have an elastic at the waist. So the crotch remains pretty much at the right level. But if you don't, the crotch is going down a little bit and that's completely normal. Finally, I'm going to give you another reason why we have to elongate the crotch like I did. Just think about if you wear a jumpsuit like that and you're going to raise the arm to grab something, how uncomfortable it could be. And that's my second reason why we need to elongate the crotch. To finalize the line, I'm going to start at the center back. First thing to remember is that since we eliminate the waist seam, the adjustment is going to be a little looser at the waist. First thing would be to elongate your center back waist of the bodice until the crotch notch on the pant. Here you see that it did add about one eighth of an inch or a few millimeters. Now for the rest of the modification, I will give you my measurement, but it all depends on the block that you're starting with. You have to keep in mind what you remove and what you're adding. So you're conscious about what you'll get as a fitting for the waist. Now for this one, since I did align my two dart and they're exactly the same value, these were 3 cm or 1 and 1 8. What I'm going to do to combine them, I'm going to connect the pivot of the pant dart to the pivot of the bodice dart. I'm going to do a straight line and then I'll put half of my dart on each side so I could have a diamond shaped dart. Now, if you notice, I didn't do a dot. I did a little line on each side because I have a big gap between my two waists. What I suggest is that you find the middle between the two waists. And from there, we're going to square to find the two points for the dart. Now we could connect the two sides of the dart to both pivot. Now for the second dart, the little one, I'm going to skip it now and we'll do the side seam modification and that will explain why I will eventually cancel that one. Trace a line from the waist side seam of the pant to the waist side seam of the bodice and then you find the middle. Now we could connect the underarm point to the middle point that we just find at the side seam. Now for the bottom part, you're going to take your French curve and connect the middle point again to the side seam of the pant. We have to do a very soft line. 
Once it's done, I suggest that you flip your ruler to eliminate the little point that you have over there. Now, if you could see, uh, it, I went in a little bit on the side seam. So I did remove part of the value of the dart. The rest of it, I suggest that you leave it there. Like I was saying, the waist has to be a little bigger. You need a little more ease. The reason is that the waist level is going to move up and down depending if you raise your arm, if you sit, you need longer and you will have it because we're leaving part of the dart there. Now we're ready to do the correction for the front. Here again, what I suggest is that you connect both pivot of the darts. Then if you remember, we have a dart of two centimeter for the pant and four cm for the bodice or here three quarter of an inch and an inch and a half. As you know, I like to go right in the middle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go right in the middle of these two measurement between two and four, there's three. I'm going to put half and a half on each side of the center line. I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to find the middle between the two ways and I'm going to trace a square with the middle of the dart and find the two points for the width of the dart. Then you could connect this point with the bottom pivot and the top pivot. Here we'll do the same thing. So you're going to connect both side seam and waist point. We find the middle. Then you could connect the middle point to the underarm. Then with the French curve, you're going to connect with the middle point. Then again, if you have a point, you should remove the point using the French curve on the other side. Now, if I explain a little bit what happened here, for the bodice dart, I reduce it about a centimeter or three eighths of an inch. That means the waist was too big. I removed it on the side seam and I did pretty much the opposite for the bottom or the pant part. I enlarged my dart, so I took too much and I added back on the side seam. Now the two jumpsuit piece are done. The only thing you would be missing to try on are the punch holes. If you remember for the bodice part, the top dart, we should move the pivot or the apex down about two centimeter, but the punch hole should be another centimeter down. Then you have a punch hole a centimeter higher or three eight higher than, than the pivot of the pant part. Punch hole. Then at the waist, you have the choice or you put it three millimeter inside or one eight inside from both sides of the dart. Or the second choice is to place only on one side and one on the middle line. And that's what I prefer. Now for the back, I'll do the same thing. But remember that for the back, you don't have to drop the pivot of the dart. Then since it's to try on, I'm also going to move the pivot of the shoulder dart two centimeter or three quarter of an inch. And I'm going to place my punch hole another centimeter or three eighth of an inch inside. Now again, since it's to try on, Remember that you do need an opening or in the front or in the back. If it's on the front, it's from the neck all the way to the notch. If it's in the back, same thing from the neck all the way to the double notch. That's it for today. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching and I see you next time.